What is going on tonight, guys? Welcome back. We're doing a new episode of Midnight Sessions. Now, I haven't done one of these in probably about a year, so maybe I should actually name this something else. I mean, let me know in the comments if I should give this a new name. But tonight's gonna be a Midnight Sessions. It's not quite midnight out, as you can see. It's still daylight. I'm trying to stay awake until midnight, drinking my Red Bull, so we'll see what happens. We're gonna be doing some long overdue guitar maintenance on one of my guitars. And then after that, maybe we'll check out the new guitar that I just got in a couple days ago. That might be really cool. So if you wanna hang out, chill out, that's awesome. Maybe grab yourself an adult beverage. Yeah, I'm gonna go single malt tonight for myself. 12 year old single malt, that's gonna be pretty good. But if you uh, are a beer person, I see you craft beer people. If that's you, grab yourself a craft beer. Get whatever you want, adult beverage, hot cup of tea, hot cup of coffee. I'm gonna go grab the guitar. We're gonna check it out and then let's get into it. So this is my Mexican Strat. This is my 1990 Fender Made in Mexico Stratocaster, which by the way was the first year that they started making Stratocasters in Mexico. In 1990, I think Fender was really trying to maintain the same level of quality as they were making in the US, just with cheaper labor costs. I mean, that's just, my personal view of what was going on at the time. And so it's 34 years old. Does that make it vintage? I guess, maybe, maybe not. There doesn't seem to be a lot of appreciation in the resale value for these on sites like Reverb and stuff like that. People don't seem to care that it was the first year they were made in Mexico. I do, nobody else does, that's okay. So this is like a perpetual mod platform. I just am always changing things out on it, whether it's for aesthetic reasons or the pickups for the sound or the hardware or what have you. But I'm always altering something on it, but nothing I ever do to it is permanent. Everything can be undone. So I always save the parts regardless of how cheap or whatever material they're made out of. I save all the parts. Why do we do that? I don't know. I have them all labeled and put away in plastic bags. I'm never going to use them again and I'm never selling this guitar. So I don't even know why I save those parts for whatever reason I just do. Um, all right. I think the Red Bull's starting to hit because I'm talking way too fast. Anyways, this guitar is long overdue for a little TLC. Some routine maintenance because, as we all know, nobody enjoys doing maintenance on the guitars. But it needs it. I actually keep a spreadsheet on my computer which outlines when I last changed the strings on all my guitars, what the tunings are, what brand of strings I use, and what gauges. So I have all that data. This guitar, the strings were last changed 14 months ago. That is way past due. Yeah, they're bad. So we're gonna polish up the frets, we're gonna change the strings on this, and then see what this bad boy sounds like after that. If you wanna hang out, come along for the ride. Let's get to it. We're gonna move over to the workbench here, or AKA my desk. <laughs> and get to work. All right, we're back. We've got a new camera angle, new lens, wide angle, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Got you over here as well. These strings, gots to go. And like I said, 14 months, that's a long time. I used to keep my strings on forever, like years, but then I wasn't doing YouTube. And I think Eric Johnson said it once that he keeps his strings on until they break. Either Eric Johnson or Satriani said that. They just keep their strings on basically until they break. They like the feel of broken in strings and I've always been the same way too. I mean, even before I ever heard that from them. They're a little lifeless and dead. They're not as bright, but they just feel better under your fingers. So, you know. And uh, this bridge is a six point trim, but I've got it decked, which is just cranked on with five springs there really tight so it's just locked in place it's not going anywhere so when i take these strings out it's not going to make a difference whatsoever and uh yeah what's funny too is when you're doing this on camera this isn't how i normally do this i usually change strings on my lap i just find it easiest that way from whatever reason i've always done it that way so you know do it however you want to do it Things coming out now I do like to make sure ah and not do that don't do that people that's bad yeah. okay. pull them all out at once why not I was gonna try and tape down my bridge saddles because I like to do that, but I forgot to do that. I'm super OCD about the bridge saddles moving whenever I change strings. And uh, if, when they move what's the tiniest little bit, it just freaks me out. So I'm going to literally tape these down with painter's tape. I do this all the time. Um, in fact, I think I did this in the last video. It's just my thing. I don't know. 
It's just my thing. Don't hate me. Taping them right down because I don't want them to budge whatsoever. And hopefully they don't. All right, so now we're gonna clean up these frets because damn, they need it. And uh, I've been using this stuff for years. This lizard spit. These things are really good, although I need to get my gloves because they're a little messy. And uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. I gotta show you guys the cat because this guy is always here. He's not even our cat. He just like adopted us. So he's always on the porch. And I'm still recording there. Freaking sweet. All right, cool. So if you're gonna be using this stuff or something similar, uh, you're gonna need to get yourself some gloves and some paper towels because this shit's kind of messy and you don't really want it on your fingers. It's just kind of gross. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. All right. Bad boys. I've used this pack countless times and I paid for it. You buy it once and you have it for years. So this thing is like, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's the best system out there, but I really, I approve. Wow. So if you're gonna use this lizard spit stuff, you're gonna need a little trash can, some paper towels, and probably at least one glove because like I said, you don't wanna get this stuff on you. It's kind of gross. Well, it's really gross. It's these little pads, ah, and there they are that come like pre-impregnated with like polishing them. So, and these little fret thingies that go over the fret so you don't get it all over your fretboard too much. And I think it says, uh, just go back and forth like eight to 10 times, something like that. But I always do a little extra. I think it's got like buffing compound or something similar in it that it really does shine these up nicely. And then just work your way down the neck. And um, I basically never have to do this on my stainless steel frets. But on your nickel frets, or if they're a lower quality nickel, nickel silver, whatever, you're going to have to do it more often, you know, maybe once a year. It depends how much you play the guitar, too. If you're playing it more, I think that they're just going to stay smoother, longer. Because not only is it going to play better, it's going to look better. It just feels better. Everything about it is basically better. So, um, And then after you get a few frets with one of these pads, you can toss it out get another one, but I'm getting low here at this point. I've had this pack for like five years and I'm almost out finally. So I have to buy it again. And I don't think it was very expensive, but it does the job. If you prefer to do this with a Dremel tool and like a little buffer wheel, that works too. I just don't have all that and I'm not gonna invest in all that when I can get one of these things for what, 10, 20 bucks, a little pack of these things and uh, they work fine. All right. So that's good so far. We're gonna go to the next one. Yeah, we're almost done with the polishing part of this. That's how easy it is. You know, 10 to, 10 to 15 passes on each fret. Does a pretty good job. Hopefully you got yourself an adult beverage or whatever it is you like to imbibe with. Enjoy. It's a Saturday night. I'm all alone here at the house because I leave someone out with her girlfriends to do some girly stuff. So while I'm doing this, maybe leave a comment down below. Tell me guys, what have you been watching recently? Binge watching? Something good, something new, something old? We're we're re-watching Outlander currently. We just started it again, and it's a pretty long series. I think it was like, I don't know, eight or nine seasons? Like long seasons. And it's a great show. Highly recommend it. The polish part is done already, right? Now, if I can find my, I probably someday should get a real workbench. That would be useful. Uh, now you gotta get the, get the grime off with whatever. Just gonna use a paper towel first. There's plenty of this stuff in there. There's a lot of people online too that'll tell you to use um, steel wool for this, for polishing your frets, which it does work. But then you get the little dust fragments, the metal fragments that get stuck to your pickups and ruin them. So it's not really a good idea in the long run. If you're gonna take your neck off completely and do that stuff outside or out in the shed or a barn or what have you, go to town at it. But uh, otherwise I would not recommend the steel wool thing. I, I have some here, I did it once and then I regretted it. Then you're sitting there with tape and like the vacuum trying to get all the fragments, the little metal shaving fragments off of your pickups and it's it's nonsense, so don't do that to yourself. 
I don't know, what do you guys think? These frets look better already, right? They're starting to shine up a little bit. And we haven't even really polished them. I mean, well, we did, but we didn't buff it out yet. So we still have to clean up uh, the fretboard. Next step is to put some oil on the fretboard because, you know, it's dry, porous wood and it's kind of like your skin. You got to put lotion on it once in a while, right? Or it just dries out and cracks. So we definitely don't want that to happen. But before we do the oil, you know what? A little bit of cleaner in my life. So I'm gonna go with this cleaner and prep stuff here. Um, I've had this for a while. Seems to work all right. I can't complain. If I did complain, who'd listen? So I'm just gonna spray it on the rag and give it a once over. I think it's gonna just help get the rest of that residue up and whatever gunk and grime is on there. That looks pretty good. We'll, we'll do one more round for uh, giggles. How about that? Yeah, we're coming into the spooky season, guys. Halloween's almost here. I like Halloween. I think Halloween's probably my favorite holiday, if I'm being honest. You don't have to give presents, and uh, you get to scare the shit out of kid, little kids, so that's cool. All right, we're cleaned up. Now we're gonna put some oil on it and then we'll be good to go. Maybe. I think this Red Bull's starting to hit because whew. I don't know about wings, man, but I'm ready to take off. Maybe I'll just speed through some of this for you guys so you don't have to like sit here and literally watch me do this for half an hour. Man, I still love this guitar. 34 years later, I, I will never get rid of this thing. Nothing special about it. It's just that it's my first and it feels and plays great, man. It just does. It's like, it's like you know, when they first started making Squires in Japan, I guess they were making them there first. They were like top tier. The quality was ridiculous. But then years later, it's like Squire got a bad name. Somehow, someone, somewhere just marketed it as Squire's just a lesser instrument because it's not a real Fender or something like that. I didn't really buff it all out yet because I want to let it kind of soak in for a few minutes. And I'm going to go get a clean cloth and then we're going to buff this bad boy out. So, you know, it's always best to make sure you have all the tools and stuff you need before you start recording the video. But uh, I don't do it that way, guys. Whatever, you know, normal convention is, I do the opposite. Um, no, I just had to get a clean cloth to get this. Give it one last nice buff up here, and then it should be good to go. Uh, we're good, guys. We're ready to put some new strings on. So I'm going to go wash my hands because I still have a little bit of this oily residue on there. Grab another drink. This is going to be a long-ass video. All right, all right, all right. Here we are. Almost done. Almost done with this process. Um, you know, pro tip right here, guys. Whenever you take the strings off, make sure that you check the uh, nuts on the tuners and maybe the screws on the back and just gently, gently kind of hand snugify them. Make sure they're, you know, make sure they're good. So these are 10 millimeter and I'm not gonna crank them on. I'm just gonna barely see that they're not loose, essentially. That's all I wanna do. I'm not trying to crank them on there or anything like that. And these are good. For some reason though, hello, can't get that one, there we are. For some reason, those tend to get loose on some guitars. They just tend to back out over time, which is odd. I don't know why it does that. Yeah, so recently I switched over to String Joys. I've been making the switch from Ernie Ball to String Joys simply because I like the ethos of the company, I like the customer service, and I like the customization you can do with these things. You can basically customize any set you can fathom and they're gonna charge you the exact same price as a pre-made set, so that's incredible. And uh, since I have so many guitars and so many different tunings, I've been messing around with different string gauges to see what's really like the perfect set for each tuning. And it's kind of an ongoing process, but I don't know. These strings are just, uh, they're, they're good, man. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with these things for a while. So String Joy, if you're out there and you're listening, uh, would love an endorsement. That'd be amazing. And I'm going 10 to 46, tuned a half step down on this guitar. So 
And guess what? It's a fender scale length. Can you believe that? So 25 and a half inches, half step down, 10 to 46 for me is perfect. Goldilocks, not too tight, not too slinky. I always put the heavy strings on first and it really doesn't matter. That's just the way I do it. So if you don't do it that way, you're wrong. I hope you guys have that adult beverage because this video is going to be way too boring otherwise. Yeah. Hey, watch watch this guy not open, not be able to open a pack of strings for 10 minutes. That, that's cool. Yeah, let's watch that. Let's all get together in the dorm room and watch that. I think I've lost it. I don't know about you guys, but I always change my strings. Nice. I always change my strings on my lap. For me, it's just a lot. E well, hello. Hello. It's a lot easier. Of course, you might want to take the, remove the tape so the string can get through. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can't find the hole. Only because I'm recording a video right now. If, like, if the camera wasn't on. Wow. All right. There we go. Hello. Hello. Hello, is all I would say. Hello. All right. Nice. Nice. Yeah, 10 to 46 is my jam. Cool. Where's my cutty? Cutty cutter. Good old trusty cutty cutterson. Uh, we're just going to snip it here for now. Just kind of shore it up a little bit. Just in, just in case. What are you guys drinking tonight out there? Let me know. Um, I'm going to have a little single malt here momentarily after I get these strings on, which at this rate might be tomorrow morning. But I know you craft beer guys are out there. What's your favorite craft beer that no one's ever heard of? We've got like 20 small breweries here in town in the Buffalo area. And we got a handful of distilleries as well, so I'm sure you guys have a bunch of craft breweries out there. Wow, this sucks. I have a high school buddy of mine who started a small brewery here in town with like two other friends. And um, <laughs> I went to my 20 year high school reunion and he was telling me about him and his friends are starting to brew beer in the basement as just like a fun project, a hobby, whatever. And I was like, that's cool, whatever. Like, I couldn't care less, right? And uh, this was quite a few years ago. But now, had I only known what would become a huge industry, this whole craft brew industry, I would have been like, here's my money. Can I invest? Oh, my God. If I had only known. How many times have you said that in your life? If I had only known then what I know now, things would be a lot different. But I was never a serious beer guy, you know? I was like, Coors Light on the beach, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm drinking wine or hard liquor. That was kind of my thing. So I didn't feel like I was missing out with the beer thing until years later when it's like, oh my God, the money these people are making with these breweries is insanity. And I, guys, I got to tell you, Locking tuners is the way to go. Henning is absolutely right. He preaches it all the time, and I pretty much do too. Uh, you want locking tuners on your guitar, not for the tuning stability, but for the quick string changes. As you can see, you don't have to sit there and wind them around the posts. And if anything, it's going to be more stable because there's less winds around each post. So there's less... It's physics, guys. There's, there's just less string loosening up, tightening up every time you use your whammy bar or bends and stuff like that. There's less material around the post to move incrementally every time you do that stuff. So it just makes sense to have locking tuners. And on top of that, these Godo locking tuners are staggered. So it basically eliminates the need for string trees. I still have the one on there, but I think I'm gonna take it off. I just left it there for the aesthetics of it, you know, cause Fender Strat always has string trees. It doesn't need it. I should take it off. And eventually I will. Um, but I make these nice and tight. You can see I'm holding the guitar by the string so that it's as taut as possible before I even start winding it. 
The only reason you might not want to do that, and you might want to have a little bit of extra slack around the post, is if you're somebody who likes to use the same set of strings and detune it once in a while. So if I was doing drop detuning or something lower, you got to have more, more string around the post just simply to do that. But I'm never doing that. So nice and tight and snip it right as close as possible. And it's good to go. Let me know if this is the most boring video you have ever seen on YouTube in your entire life. I'm going with yes, probably. But you know what? I don't care. I do not care. So recently the cat out there, who we, we named Slice because he's got this cut in his ear. Uh, recently he's been bringing home a mouse like every morning as a gift, I guess. Which is cool and all. I'm glad he's catching the mice. But, like, I don't want them on the deck. You know what I mean? But he usually takes them down and eats them afterwards. So he's been doing good good with that. So I recommend, I highly recommend you get yourself an outdoor cat. Outdoor only. Because I am extremely allergic to cats. And uh, he's not even my cat. He just showed up. He just rolled up one day like, yo, I live here now. At least and I were just like, cool, I guess. Nice. Slice. And he follows us around. He's like a dog. Like literally, we'll go for a walk down on the road outside the house. He'll literally follow us up and down the road. Like I've got video of it, it's so funny. Dude's out of control. One more string to go and then we can actually tune this up and play. That might be nice. I'll probably watch this, the playback on this stuff and be like, this entire video is ridiculous. Maybe this is the best video you've ever seen in your entire life. Perfectly in tune, look at that guys. We'll be back after these messages. Okay, so I got the strings broken in, stretched out, tuned up, we're good to go. And more importantly, adult beverage. First sip, it's just like, let me ask you guys something real quick. Do you, oh, there goes my pick. Do you guys do this? I've been saving my string ball ends for years. Years. All right, a couple of years, I don't know. But I've got a shit ton of them and I have no idea why I'm saving them or what I'm gonna do with them. But what I'll do is wrap the strings up, ready for the garbage, but I'll snip all the ball ends off first and I've got a little container I've been keeping them in. I don't know, I figured someday I'd make uh, some kind of jewelry out of them or something, I don't know. Kind of weird. Am I the only person in the world that does that? Let me know. So, got the guitar tuned up. These are, like I said, 10 to 46. I've got it in uh, drop, or excuse me, this is in uh, E flat standard. So half step down and running a little Pliny X on the computer. But I have to say this, changing, uh, changing string brands, you're not always gonna have the same exact tensile strength uh, you know, the same tension, even if you're changing to the same gauge with a different brand. So I've just noticed that now because previously I, I had the Ernie Balls on here because like I said, these were on here for 14 months. So I had the Ernie Ball 10 to 46 and they were honestly perfect, if not a little bit stiff, which is preferable than having them too loose. These are a little bit, little bit too slinky for me in E flat. So either I've got to tune this up to standard or I might switch out to String Joys a higher string gauge, like 10 and a half to 48, something like that, which I think I'm probably gonna do, but uh, it's all a learning process. There's a learning curve involved. Whenever you're gonna change brands, string brands from one to another, you're just gonna come across that. I mean, they're just not gonna feel exactly the same. Even though they might be the same string gauges, the same thickness, the tensile strength is gonna be different for each brand for whatever reason. So these are a lot more slack and slinky, which is great for bends and blues and stuff. But if I want to play some fast, some fast licks or some heavy chugging, there's a lot of string drift going on here. So I don't know. I'm going to mess around with them for a little while, but I might up the string gauge eventually.
Wow, that needs work. <laughs> Anyways, these frets feel so much better now that I've polished them. Nice and smooth. Oh, I'm loving it. So, yeah, I'm going to get down with this guitar for a while and um, maybe write some new stuff with it because, honestly, I've just been thinking about this guitar for a while. Do you ever do that? Like, you've got several guitars and there's one you just haven't played in a while and you just keep thinking about it in the back of your mind or like every other day or like you're dreaming about it and it's like, I got to pick that one up. I got to play it. I got to show it some love. So, definitely, it was time. It was well overdue. Mexican Strat 1990, this thing rocks, but it's still going through its transformation. And uh, in the next week or two, we're going to have some new stuff to show you guys as I continue to mod this thing up. And it's just a lot of fun. I mean, if you've got the means, if you've got the inclination and the patience to kind of keep doing different stuff or putting new pickups in it, what have you, do it. Try it out. I mean, you get a new sound, you get a new feel, a new vibe, and uh, it's always inspiring to try something new. Listen to some new music, try to play something different than what you normally play, play a different instrument for once, play uh, humbuckers or play single coils for a change. I mean, mix it up. These are Seymour Duncans. They sound pretty good. They're decent for, you know, Strat, but I'm pretty much mostly a humbucker guy. I'll be honest. I just prefer the warmer, fuller sound and a little less noise. Although these aren't very noisy. They're supposed to be noiseless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the liquor's getting to me, for sure. So I'll ask you guys this. How often do you do routine maintenance on your guitars? How often do you polish your frets, change your strings, um, stuff like that? You know, Do you lubricate the, uh, the mechanisms and the trim points where it touches, things like that? Do you do that stuff or do you just kind of let it sit there and rot and rust? I really... I keep hearing something. Oh, it's the fridge making noises back there. So I'm going to ask you guys this. How often do you do routine maintenance, things like fret polishing, things of that sort, or just changing the strings? How often do you do that? Um, I prefer not to have to change them very often because I've got way too many guitars and I play them a lot. And if you're recording with them, you're sweating because you're tensed up and it's like you just have to change them more often. But if you just kind of play them leisurely or you just pick it up once in a while for a couple of hours, I like to leave strings on there for a few months. I mean, a good two, three, four, five months at least because who's spending 10 to 15 dollars you know every week or so changing strings unless you're playing live or you're endorsed by some string company and by the way if you haven't noticed already we got mr peepers on the scene because you know halloween's coming up and it's a spooky season so we got to get him involved that's mr peepers what up yeah guys that's pretty much it oh you know what we got to check out the new guitar so hang on let me go grab that one and it's not gonna be a full demo. We're just gonna kinda of check it out tonight and see what it looks like and uh, see how it sounds. <laughs> Okay, so this is the new guitar that I just got in a couple of days ago. This is the Charvel DK22 with a two-point trim. Uh, I have the same guitar in the 24 fret version, and it's got an HH configuration. This is three single coils, but actually it's not three single coils because the bridge pickup is actually a single coil spaced humbucker. It's the Seymour Duncan Hot Rails, I believe, and uh, it's very mid-forward. And it's a humbucker, so it does a job. And then they have a reverse round, reverse polarity pickup in the neck, so that these two pickups, when played together in position four, are hum canceling. And um, all these pickups are extremely high output, especially compared to the Seymours I have in the Fender Strat. And uh, they sound good. You know, they sound decent. I don't know if they're really for me though. So 
you know, whatever, teach his own. Let's just uh, keep jamming here. <laughs> So this is not going to be a full review tonight about this guitar, but I just wanted to kind of showcase it real quick. Uh, it is a beautiful instrument. I love this color. I love the feel of this guitar. But again, this is the 22 fret version, and the geometry on this is slightly different from the 24 frets, besides the fact that there's two less frets. Uh, there's a few other things going on here as far as dimensions, and I kind of want to go over that in more detail, so I'm going to wait till the next video to kind of go over the specs and all that stuff. But it's kind of interesting, so stick around for that one. Um, that's pretty much it for tonight, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot for hanging out. If you guys stuck around to the end of the video, I really do appreciate it. Sincerely, thank you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to annihilate that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you have not already. I appreciate it, guys. And uh, it's been a fun evening, and I, I enjoyed my drink. I hope you did, too. That's all I've got for you guys for tonight. So uh, take it easy. Get some rest. I'll see you again in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. See you.